So there are a host of completely nerdy problems that you can encounter when you're editing that have nothing to do with the fun stuff of actually creating drama and everything to do with keeping yourself and your team organized as you work so that you can hopefully be more efficient with your time and put your best foot forward when you're working with producers and directors. And I'm going to talk about a tool that I've started using uh, that I think can help minimize these annoying chores and put as much of them on automatic pilot as possible. And that's a piece of software called Keyboard Maestro. And it's not new in cutting rooms. Uh, assistants often use it, but I don't, I don't normally see editors messing around with it. And I think it's worth an editor's time uh, to get to know it and see what it might be able to do for the workflow. Because for those of you who don't know about it already, it's a little uh, program that is like a macro creator. It allows you to program your computer to execute series of commands automatically and you know thereby save you time and a lot of repetitive clicking and I'm not gonna go through exactly how it works there are a lot of tutorials out there you can find that'll do that a lot better than I could but I'll just show you some of the ways that I've started using it and have found it helpful so here we go all right so the first thing is something that it would seem like you wouldn't really need it wouldn't be worth the time of programming a macro and maybe for you it wouldn't be but for me I found it helpful and that is just deleting a sequence. If I have a sequence here, trash, and I want to delete it, I hit the delete key, and then I go to this checkbox, I select OK, and then the sequence goes away. Um, for me, that's too many clicks some, most of the time. Most of the time, I just want to delete a sequence with a single click like that, and it's gone. Um, Keyboard Maestro, uh, that's very easy to build, and that uh, is doable. Uh, similarly, a lot of times when I've got sequences, I want to tag things with the date or maybe sometimes the current time. And yes, I have a calendar in my menu bar. It's easy enough to look at what the date is and write it out. Um, but there's room for error there, especially too if you're doing slates. Assistants might, uh, you know, want to uh, do a slate date with uh, this command because. Um, you know, every show I've worked on, assistant has, you know, done the forehead slap and been like, oh, God, I, I got to redo the slate because the date's wrong. Um, anyway, but as far as naming your sequences go, sometimes you might want to add the date. I just type date and it appends it to the end of the sequence name. Very helpful. Same thing with time. I can say time and it will append the time to the end of the sequence. Um, again, it leaves out room for error and just keeps you consistent and saves you a little bit of time. Creating a new sequence. Very easy to do. It's like two clicks of the mouse and you've got a new sequence. Um, the problem is, is that now you have to name it. And I don't really want to think about naming sequences. And when I name sequences, I'm best served to be very consistent about it and to include certain information. And if you're anything like me, uh, that sort of consistency um, doesn't always come naturally and there'll be some variance and it just again it's another place where you can kind of inadvertently screw things up as you go and uh, things become less organized so if I create a new sequence I've created a command where I can say new sequence and what that does is it takes me through a series of prompts to include the different components that make up a naming convention for sequences that I've decided upon, which would be the show code, the episode number, what cut it is, the rough, you know, whether it's a rough cut or whatever, um, and uh, the day's date. And I say OK, and then it also will prompt me to put in a description in the uh, bin column for description, say, um, of, of what it might be like first pass and now I've got um, you know I've got a sequence that conforms to my naming convention I've made sure to put in a little description if I want um, and that's helpful because as you go you will probably create a lot of different sequences maybe in a bin as you work and they end up kinda of looking like this now this is relatively neat but all these sequences you know, they're all named a little different. 
um, I've got copy copy maybe in some of these whatever uh, they're kind of inconsistent and if I use that tool that I just showed I could end up with that same bin that looks more like this where things are a lot more consistent it's more neatly laid out if another assistant or another editor needs to go into this bin um, they'll be they'll have an easier time finding what they need uh, and it'll minimize maybe some mistakes and it'll just speed things along um, another one version in typically uh, you know there are a lot of instances where you've completed one version of a cut and maybe you've got your notes uh, that you're going to do now and so you want to version up the cut and so I've got one that says version up and what that's going to do is now it's just going to prompt me for what's different about this cut well this cut is uh, say network cut now and it's going to be version one of that and is there so first pass maybe on this and now we've got a new version oh and it's automatically throwing that sequence by the way into my timeline um, so that I'm sure to start doing my changes in this and not accidentally doing my changes in the old sequence which I think everybody's done at some point uh, it's very annoying but um, anyway so I've got you know a new sequence it's easier than just duplicating the sequence like I normally used to do and then I'm noodling in here and I'm going okay this is now network cut and we're gonna go version uh, 4 and we're gonna get rid of the copy copy um, so I delete that and you get the idea it's a lot it's a lot <laughs> that's annoying to me compared to just going like that keying in the new information and then you've got a sequence um, and then finally I would show you snapshots snapshots that's just terminology that I'm stealing from Final Cut 10 and uh, all that is is freezing a cut in time kind of stamping it with a time and date um, and a label that says snapshot so that like if I wanted to just like save a version of a cut as backup before I do a bunch of new changes I might create uh, a snapshot and so what's that that so what that is doing is it is um, it's just duplicated the sequence added the name snapshot given it the current date current time and maybe prompted me for a description of what's different about it uh, anyway that's it those are a couple of the things that I've found useful and um, uh, maybe if I do another one of these uh, I'll go through and talk about how I use Keyboard Maestro uh, when I'm working in the timeline with audio tracks specifically uh, using it to help me out with uh, dissolves and, and keyframes and uh, checkerboarding audio anyway thanks for watching